was uh, some injuries and you were- Yeah, so I had a, some bad luck starting in 2007 um, with a quad tear. I was literally just jump, jumping over a, um, it was like a structure, uh, almost like a river, but it was in the city. So it was like, being, um, but I went to jump through and the quad literally tore. It was, I was wearing vans, you know, slip-ons. So my foot slipped um, and the explosiveness of the, of the jump literally tore the quad right off. Um, so anyway, that literally, that was in 2000, the very beginning of 2007, that required four surgeries um, yeah. to repair. I went through four surgeries um, uh, at the end of January, one in February, one in March, and then one in April due to complications with um, swelling. I fell, retore it. There was a lot of <laughs> a lot of issues. So then, then I finally recovered from that, and uh, and then blew up my left uh, side and had to get it repaired. Um, and so that one I retore again. Um, the healing process is is brutal, you know, because you can't contract the muscle. And you know, once your muscles have learned how to contract with power and force, it's hard to stop them from doing that. And so. You know, it literally just rips right off when it's trying to reheal. And so I had to have a second one to repair that. So I had that in June, but now what is it, February already, 2022? Uh, so I'm finally getting back to, uh, I started doing some deadlifts and squats finally. So. Oh, you got to be careful, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, getting back. You know, the, the nice thing, though, what I always say is even when, when the injury, when I'm lying on the ground, <laughs> knowing that what's ahead of me, the first thought is, what am I going to be able to teach people from this experience? And the nice thing is, is when you have an injury, you adapt your training. And so you take on different styles of training and you learn, you know, a lot of new ways. And for example, I had, I switched over to full body training because I couldn't do any cardio. Right. And so my physical activity levels dropped. I was on crutches, you know? So, um, so I went to full body training. Obviously, uh, I couldn't train the lower body, although I did train the other leg. We can talk about contralateral training uh, as well, sort of keep that up. Um, but I went to full body training and never gained any body fat. Wow. So what's full body training exactly? Does that mean that we do all muscle groups on the same day? So, yeah. So with full body training, if you really think about the way most athletes train, if you think of like strength and conditioning programs for football players and different athletes, they typically train the whole body, right? Because the whole body's on the field. The whole body's always playing. Uh, a bodybuilder is interested in focusing on their biceps or their right, but a, an athlete is really performing with their whole body all the time, you know? So they tend to train with full body. So you're doing typically one exercise per muscle group. Um, but, you know, so what I was doing was one, exactly that. But the problem with full body training is if you're doing one exercise per muscle group, what type of a pump are you getting? Not much, right? And so although your volume over the week, because you're training, like let's say you do four sets in a workout, whereas you normally would do 20 sets for chest, say, right? But you do four on Monday, you do four on Tuesday. If you train five days in a row, that's 20 sets, right? The volume is the same over the week if you were just training chest once a week, but you're not getting all that stimulation when you go in there, like a bodybuilder trains, right? A real bodybuilder who's stepping on the stage of the Olympia, they go in and declare war on chest, right? They don't just go and go, oh, four sets, I'm done, right? They're not done until their chest is done, fried, right? And so the problem with whole body training is you don't get the volume during that acute workout, right? And so you don't get the fatigue and fatigue is important. It, you get, you know, growth factor response, hormone responses from that fatigue and that's what leads to muscle growth. So with the full body training, it's great for fat loss because it keeps your metabolic machinery turned on, right? And you're constantly recovering muscles. And recovery is a, is a calorie-consuming process. And it's great for fat loss, but is it really ideal um, for muscle growth? So one of the things I came up with is a what's called a full split, where you train each muscle group with, say, a minimum of four sets, Right. But on one day per week, you do a full bodybuilding style workout for that muscle group, right? So let's say Monday was chest day. You'd come in and do maybe 12, 15, 16 sets for chest, a real chest workout. Then you'd finish with one exercise for back, one exercise for triceps, one, you know what I'm saying? To keep on the full body. That way you're getting the best of both worlds. You're getting that acute stimulation during the workout, all the volume, you're getting the pump. Because remember, 
a pump is not just about looking good in the gym, right? What does a pump do? Physiologically speaking, the pump stretches the muscle, okay? And there are stretch receptors that understand the muscles being stretched and it needs to grow and it stimulates muscle protein synthesis that leads to muscle growth. So the nice thing about the full split is you're getting the full body benefit of the metabolic stuff. You're losing the body fat, but then you're still getting the bodybuilding style training. So, so I understand. So let's say first day you focus on chest, you do the full chest workout, but then you throw in every other like it's one just exercise one exercise per, yep. per, per body yep. uh, part. And it's just to keep that the the genes stimulated in those muscle fibers. And by stimulating those genes, you're keeping your metabolic processes firing. You're burning more fat throughout the day. And then the second day, you focus on, let's say, just the, the legs. Different muscle, different yeah, muscle you're going back throw on, legs, okay. right? Mm -hmm. and, then, and then you'll still do one exercise for chest, even though you just trained it yesterday, right? And again, the point of the, the, the point of that one exercise is really metabolically speaking, not, not growth wise. So essentially when you do such a workout, you can eliminate doing cardio, right? Is that, is that accurate? Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, exactly. Obviously you want your cardio, uh, or some kind of component, cardiovascular component for, if we're talking about health, right? If we're. Overall, we're talking about fitness here versus just bodybuilding. Um, and not, I'm not trying to say bodybuilding is not healthy. I'm just saying that's not the goal of the bodybuilder is his health. It's to be big, right? And, and muscular. Talking about fitness where the overall goal is health, you know, you want all those components of fitness. Then, yeah, you should, con you should include some form of cardiovascular, not just, you know, straight up weightlifting, typical sets and reps. Maybe you do, you could still do with weights. You could do Tabatas, right? something like that. So it doesn't have to be typical. You don't have to get on a treadmill to do cardio. You know what I'm saying? You could still do it with some type of light resistance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you find that, that the older you get, um, the more prone to injury you are? Um, is, that, is that accurate? Or no? <laughs> that, that's a great question. For I just turned 54 uh, January 13th. So uh, let me tell you, I can speak from experience as far as getting older. Wow. Um, I literally can't believe uh, I'm 54. I remember when I was the kid in the gym. I was the the, the phenom, the the 16 year old. Look at this kid benching and squatting, all this weight. Now I'm the old man. It's crazy. It's so crazy. But yes, obviously, you are recovery. Um, and and again, speaking as a natural uh, athlete, again, you know your hormone levels start start dropping. Your recovery goes. Um, you start losing muscle. And the other problem with getting old is your muscle protein synthesis drops, right? So if I eat 30 grams of protein, my muscle protein synthesis doesn't spike as high as a 20 year old. Does. So I have to eat 50 grams. I have to eat more protein to build muscle. And so it's far, far harder for numerous reasons. Look, there's no way around it. As you're getting older, you're degenerating. That that's the fact, right? If we really think about it, we weren't meant to live this long. We'd, I'd be killed by a bear uh, <laughs> or, or falling off of a cliff or something, you know? I mean, that's the, we, haven't, we haven't been around long enough to have evolved uh, far enough from sort of the hunter-gatherer, if you will. So we're really not designed to live this long. So um, I'm degenerating. There's no way around it. So really what my training now consists of is it's a little more well-rounded, right? As we get older, what I suggest people do, and I'm kind of getting off on, uh, on some tangents here, but um, what I typically recommend older people do is don't just focus on being strong or, or being big. Even if that's a, if you were a competitive bodybuilder and now you're 50 and you're no longer competing, if you're still competing, great. Keep going for the muscle mass. That's your goal. But if you're not, be more well-rounded. Include flexibility, right? You need to move. You need to keep your movement as you get older. Once you stop moving, you lose it. And once you lose it, it's hard to get it back. So you need all those components of fitness, like we talked about the cardio cardiovascular component. So my training tends to be more well-rounded now, uh, instead of just focused on, uh, the muscle mass, but, uh, because it's so hard to maintain the muscle, uh, that's a big focus for me is trying to maintain it or even build it, you know, if I can, what I can as a natural athlete.